estimated that around 90% of an iceberg's volume is below the surface of the water. The force that tends to lift any body immersed in water is called the buoyant force. This is caused by the increase in pressure as you go deeper and deeper into the water. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water, and it acts upward through the centroid of the displaced volume. If the body is floating, the weight of the entire body must equal the buoyant force, since it's in equilibrium. Recall that Newton's second law states that the net force acting on a body equals the mass of the body times its acceleration. The buoyant force equals the weight of the volume of the water displaced by the iceberg, which is the density of the water times the volume of the water displaced, V sub, times the acceleration due to gravity, G. The weight of the body itself equals its mass times gravity. Rearranging, we find that the submerged fraction of the body equals the ratio of the density of the body to the density of the water. So when the density ratio is greater than 1, or equal to 1, the body becomes completely submerged. Since the cross section of the ice block is constant, the volume ratio can be replaced by the height ratio of the submerged height of the body to its total height. In order to obtain a better understanding of this concept, we will perform two simple experiments. First, we will determine the density of an ice block. Second, we will use density found in the first experiment to find the height of a different ice block submerged in water. To perform this experiment, we will need a large container filled with water. We will also need to create two blocks of ice, one smaller and one larger. And finally, we will need a scale, a ruler, and or a caliper, and a thermometer. To perform the first experiment, take the ice out of the container. You may need to use a hot water bath to release the frozen ice from the inside of the container. Weigh the block and measure the block's diameter. These values will be used later to obtain the block's density as a check of your results. Then measure the block's height. Take the temperature of the water to get a more accurate figure for its density. Place the ice block in the water and measure the distance between the top of the block and the surface of the water. For the second experiment, repeat the steps as before. Weigh the block and measure its diameter. Measure its height and place in the water container. Measure the distance between the top of the block and the surface of the water. In this case, the height above the surface will be used only to confirm experimental results. We measured the temperature to be 48 degrees Fahrenheit. The density of water at this temperature is 999.9 .9 kilograms per meter cubed, which can be found from density tables. The total height of the ice block we measured to be 96.5 millimeters, and the height of the top of the block above the surface of the water was 9 millimeters. The diameter of the block was 175 millimeters, and the weight of the block was 4.8 pounds. Notice you have some unit conversions to handle. We converted to the SI system after the measurements were taken. Plug the height and density values into the formula we de derived for density of the ice. We arrived at density of ice equal to 906.7 kilograms per meter cubed. Use the mass over volume formula for density to get a second value for comparison. In our case, there was some error. The two density values should be fairly close. Minor imperfections in the shape of the block contributed to our error. In the second experiment, we measured the same quantities as we did in the first experiment. We plugged the, the measured values into the formula we derived before to find the height of the ice above the surface of the water. As you can see, the, the value we came up with, 14.3 millimeters, is very close to the value for the height that we measured on the ice block itself, 13.8 millimeters. The difference is not very large. In the experiments you just saw, we showed how the buoyant force and equilibrium equations can be used to determine the density and heights of floating objects. The concept of buoyancy has almost unlimited applications. Submarines, boats, fish, and balloons all depend on this force. All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. Ice is back with my brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly, flow like a hawk.